the Singapore uh, School Football Academy, the SFA program is launched in Singapore. Uh, it is part of the Unleash the Roar National Football Project to rebuild the sports foundation in Singapore. Um, it launched uh, on the 23rd of July. Right now to talk to us about it, Mr. Eric Chua Sui Leong, the chairman of Unleash the Roar, executive committee and senior parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth and Social and Family Development. And Jamie Sarah, the head coach of the Singapore Football Academy. Eric, Jamie, great to have both of you on to talk about a great story for Singapore sports community today. Good morning. Very good morning, Glenn. Neil. Thanks very much for having us on the show. Well, it's a pleasure. Eric, let's start with you uh, as you're involved heavily with the Unleashed the Raw project. Maybe for the benefit of, of our listeners who are not familiar with the project, tell us first what the Unleashed the Raw project is and then secondly, how the School Football Academy fits into that. Well, Unleashed the Raw basically is our attempt, uh, a national level attempt to really uplift Singapore football. I mean, that's the tagline or that's the, the sales pitch for Unleashed the Raw. But before I give you some updates on what is happening under Unleashed the Raw, I think it might be great if you could first agree on the fact that, you know, whatever we, whatever we do to give um, local football a sustained boost, what plans we have must be long term, it must be holistic, and you must understand that there's no quick fix, there's no silver bullets, there's, there's no instant noodles in all of this, right? So if you can agree on that, then the next natural question to then ask is, where do we start? Now, we think for us to really flourish at the highest levels of football, we must first start at the base, and that is to nurture our youth football players. Now, we officially launched our School Football Academy, or SFA program, last month, as you, as you have mentioned. We also shared plans during the launch for a youth football tournament to be held at the National Stadium next year as well as to send our first batch of SFA youths on overseas training stints starting the later half of this year. Now, why these initiatives, you might ask? Essentially, we want to give our youth footballers opportunities to play, compete, and really immerse themselves in a high-performance environment. Mm. Take them out of the comfort zone and then push them to reach their full potential. Which is wonderful. And you recently had 100 young footballers took part in the friendly competition at Jurongville last month to kick off the thing with uh, footballers coming from uh, 10 different school football academies. And Jamie Serro is a head coach at one of them, I believe, Jamie. What are some of the skills? Because I know there's a La Liga Spanish influence, which is fantastic. What are some of the skills that you are hoping to bring to the school children who take part in these academies? Uh, uh, thank you, and, and hi, Glenn and, and May, and congratulations for your, this amazing program on this part. Okay, uh, yeah. the skills that we want to bring, I mean, in La Liga in Spain, as you said, as modern football, uh, we play a possession-based game, you know, so, so the idea is to build first uh, the basic skills in order to, to make football as an art. Football is an art, as you do a painter, so, so you must be a good painter as a coach, uh, even as a player. You, 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 you must follow the, 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 this kind of points in order to, to become professional. Wonderful. And Eric, if I could yeah. just jump in there, uh, I'm going to say the question that everyone watching or listening may be thinking. As soon as you say art, the Kiasu parent will think, no, science, <laughs> <laughs> maths, <laughs> STEM. You know this all too well, don't you, Eric? <laughs> PSLE, after PSLE, indeed, no indeed. art, no sport. It's science, <laughs> maths, technology, and all the future. Yeah. So how, yeah, do yeah, we, yeah. how do we hope yeah. this, uh, aca these academies, this setup, how do we overcome that? Just, Let's be honest, that very established mindset you in know, Singapore. Just say, how can? That's yeah. it. How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. so, yeah, that's a great question. I think that's the question that's um, you know, hovering around the minds of many parents as they sign their boys sure. and girls up for the School Football Academies uh, in the past few months. So, But I think like many other football, youth football academies around the world, what we want to do is to make sure that our youth footballers also progress academically. I mean, let's face it, you know, high performance football is highly competitive. Not everyone will eventually get to where they want to be. And we strongly believe that it doesn't have to be a zero sum game. It doesn't have to be football or studies. How about football and studies? And I believe mm -hmm. that if you're truly passionate about your game of football, you up your game in your studies. 
And I think what Jaime mentioned earlier was also fantastic in the sense that, you know, SFA focuses not just on players' technical skills. Of course, they are informed by sports science. You know, the coaches work a lot with uh, the, the sports scientists from um, SSI, which is a sports, uh, Singapore Sport Institute, as well as NYSI, the National sure. Youth Sports Institute. So those are the technical part of things. But I think we also focus very much on values, traits, like, for instance, taking charge of your own time, time management, taking ownership of your own diet, taking ownership of your own studies, your progress you're making in not just football, but also academically. So I think mm. these traits really, you know, regardless of whether, whether these kids, you know, pursue football for life or not, oh, these values will stay with them for life. Yeah, we're talking with uh, Eric Chua Sui Leong, the chairman of Unleash the Roar and also senior parliamentary secretary of the Ministry of Cult Com Culture, Community, Youth and Social and Family Development, and also Jamie Sarah, the head coach of the newly opened School of Football Academy here, the SFA program uh, launched under part of the Unleash the Roar National Football Project. And Jamie, let, let me um, go back to you and, and let's talk about the caliber of player, even the younger players that you're seeing. Seeing. Singapore is a small country. We don't have, you know, millions and millions of young football players. Uh, we have a much smaller number than that. And, and mm -hmm. combining that with some of the cultural uh, things around schools that, that Eric has just been talking about and studying, um, how do you feel about the initial crop that you're seeing of 100 folks that came out, the, the drive that they have, the passion that they have for it, and their skill set? No, uh, um, I agree with you that that is a small country. But if you think about Uruguay or or even Spain, so, so we, we are small countries too. So not not, not many players, but uh, football is a culture there. We, we we have lunch talking about football. Uh, so every conversation football come up. So the, in here uh, you can see the passion of the guys too. You can see mm -hmm. the, the, in the sign of the eyes of the kids when. When they they go to to play, they ask you for advice, for feedback. So so this is a good start. So it, it, it's about just to to bring in a good methodology to those who are involved too, and to those who are not yet, uh, just to make the the number grow. So it's the idea. Jamie, just yeah. to stay with you through the program, uh, the number of young players who receive your elite La Liga training will be sort of under fifteen, under seventeen levels, which is the perfect age. The plan is to increase, I believe, to around 1,400 secondary school boys and girls. Fantastic, which is triple the current 500. So the plans are there to expand, to grow hmm. boys and girls, which is very important. What are the skills that you think first, Jamie, that we really need to work on? When you take these kids for the training, you talk about possession football. What are the skills that we really need to work on in Singapore? Hmm. Okay. Uh in here, you, 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 you need to develop the basics. So, as you know, I've been in China first, I've been in Indonesia and Malaysia working in, in professional football academies too in, in Spain. So, uh, you, you need first uh, to let them play as the, the first pillar of UTR says. So, you need to, to modify the games in order to give them more opportunities to practice, repetition, repetition, deliberate it, practice, you know, and then questioning, questioning them. So they have a tactical understanding, but I'm going to tell you an, an anecdote. In Spain, for example, we used to do a lot of isolated training, analytical training. But if you do that, you will have very uh, technically good players, but they don't understand the game. So the tactics are not there. So you need to, to modify the game in order to, to make them understand and to apply in a contextual like uh, environment, you know, so that's why mm. we use a lot of uh, small-sided games, uh, different of uh, modified games, as I told you, in order to improve those basics. Of course, uh, streaking the board, the four core skills that our curriculum has, uh, shooting, uh, even the one v one situation in in defend, in attack. So, but uh, I I don't want to stand about that. So the the, the main idea is to to modify the game uh, according to their level and the diversity of the level that we, we have here. Yeah. Uh, Eric, we've seen some real positive movement, I think, in professional sports uh, in Singapore in the past uh, maybe five years or so, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, we've got some very high-level uh, athletes, uh, everybody from, of course, Joseph Schooling comes to mind, but others as well who have done great things in the Commonwealth Games and, and in, in the uh, various uh, sports uh, uh, 
uh, in the various competitions that we've had. Sorry, just had a mm -hmm. minor mental collapse there. Um, and last week on, we had uh, we we were talking about the S League and the women's uh, the W the women's Deloitte League, women's uh, yeah, Premier League, yes. women pr Premier League here, where That's you've right. got women and you've got finally got some great corporate sponsorship coming up and all this. So my question to you is. Uh, the trajectory that you're seeing, you, you spoke a little bit earlier about parents and, and, you know, talking about those concerns that parents have about school and kids. But do, generally, do you see this a positive forward and upward movement in, in our sporting community here? And what's it going to take to really t propel Singapore to the next level of excellence when it comes to globally competitive uh, uh, sports people? Well, I think, um, you know, sport is in a good place today in that we see a lot of Singaporeans rallying around our sporting heroes. It's um, no longer just about schooling. We have KNU in uh, badminton, but yeah. we also learn from the recent Commonwealth Games that it's not just about KNU. We have, uh, you know, the very young Jason Tay, who did very well, fought mm -hmm. very hard in the semifinals, didn't get a medal, but I think he won Singaporeans' hearts as well. Uh, we had our mixed uh, doubles, uh, Terry as well as Wei Han, who did very well to clinch the gold medal on the very last day of the Commonwealth Games. So all in all, I think we are in a good place in sport, but I think specific to football, we have to talk about where we start, and that is to work with our youth talents. You know, we have a small mm -hmm. population in Singapore, as you rightly mentioned, we have about 300 of them playing in the school football academies, across the system, about 500 of them. We want to level that up to 1,400 in time to come. Now, we wow. need to be able to pick up talent wherever they are. It could be the SFAs, could be the Active SG Football Academies, private leagues and clubs. You know, where possible, journey with these talents, expose them to high-performance environments, and really maximize the opportunity to realize their full potential. But we need to also understand that, you know, this takes time. So what mm -hmm. we work on five years ago, We'll probably start seeing the results today and after. Or what we work on today, we might see the results five years, eight years down the road. Do you and think Singaporeans are willing to wait though to see that to see those results to wait five years? Well, I do get messages from my friends and my colleagues uh, telling me, "Oh, look at this uh, result! Look at that result! How devastating!" or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I think I take it positively in a sense that I think at least people care about how we're doing mm -hmm. in sport. I yep. mean. Doomsday will be the day when, you know, people don't really care if you don't do badly or, or we fare well. Um, yeah. I think at least that's a, a positive sign that people are, are concerned. So youth development is one thing, but I think we also need to pay attention to other pieces like coach development, um, mm. our Premier League in Singapore, because that's where most of our high uh, performance uh, football players eventually, if they end up, uh, you know, embarking on football as a career, they'll end up. And I think... Key is a couple of points that I want, I want to make. I think we need to consult widely because we need to talk to not just you know the players themselves, but also the the other players in the ecosystem like coaches, like uh, you know the the, the manage the club managers, you know the parents. Uh, lots of you know dialogue to have, and we'll be doing that in, in the months to come. Uh, we have done that you know behind the scenes uh, in the past many months, but we'll do that more more you know in the coming months and. I think the devil's really in the details, you know, yeah. because even something as small as um, we have Jaime uh, on, on, on this uh, talk show with us right now, but uh, as he will tell you, it's, it's so important for them to be able to acclimatize the Singapore culture. Well, this may not seem an important point at first glance, but actually it is important because once the coaches understand local culture, they understand the psyche of local parents, they can better communicate instructions to our young players, better... Um, you know, exchange, have exchanges with our parents and really work with our local coaches as well. So I think yeah. that was in the details, lots of work ahead of us. But I think so long as everyone can be patient, we can really work together. We can have our differences in opinions about how to get there. That's okay. We can agree to disagree. But I think so long as we have Singapore football at heart, I think this is a call to action. Uh, let's have faith in Singapore football. And yeah. the devil is in the detail. You've said Hame twice, and we've been calling you Jamie. So Sorry, Jaime, yeah. Hame, okay. we will call you Hame from now on. My, my, my mistake. Uh, uh, Eric, no uh, you make a great point there, Eric, about getting all the invested interests involved, the parents and the coaches. I speak to both, as you do, and they both say the same thing. And you probably know what I'm going to say, which is you're, you're going to focus on the under-15s and the under-17s, and that's great. So let's say, for argument's sake, you get parents to say, we're going to commit to this. PS, Post-PSLE, we're going to balance studies 
with the training. We're going to listen to the coaches. We're going to listen to everybody. And the coaches are going to say that the peak period, the pivotal period is from about 17 to 20. So if you've got a parent, and I get this from parents all the time, Eric, as I'm sure you do, I yes. will commit. I will get my child to balance the studies with the, the sports training, with people like Harme. But why should I? Because when I get to 18, 19, I'm going to lose my talent after 10 years of dedicated and standing on the touchline and cheering him on and paying for all the programs. I'm going to lose him to national service anyway. You said about conversations. Is that a conversation that we also need to have as part of the Unleash the Raw project? That's a conversation that we have been having both internally within the team as well as uh, with the parents themselves, with young players, with athletes themselves. It actually discussed across not just football but also other, uh, across other sports as well. Um, national service is a fundamental duty of every Singaporean male. Absolutely. I think, but we do have options. We do have options in the sense that we can you know, um, get our football boys to really enlist early, get the national service done, you know, they can enlist, start enlisting by 16 and a half, get into national service, you know, get NS done in about in two years, and then they still have a good runway ahead of them from 19, 18 and a half onwards. Because yes, we are trying to, you know, get in touch with them, journey with them right from secondary school, that's for now with the SFAs, but we are also looking at possibly starting even earlier, perhaps extending our school football academies to even primary schools. I mean, talks are in, 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 in progress right now. Yeah. And we could possibly bring NS slightly earlier, get, that's our, that's our, our commitment as uh, male Singapore citizens, get that, you know, done, get that uh, committed and done. And then we could continue and progress from 18 onwards. And there's still a good runway because the, the, the peak, you know, when, where a youth footballer really makes it or not, I think by the early 20s, we have a good sense as to whether a young player is going to make it as a professional footballer or otherwise, or he might want to consider other jobs in the ecosystem or, or perhaps completely even not as well. So I think we do have a plan. We do have uh, options in uh, with regard to national service. That's great. Uh, great comments. It great is, to hear. Yeah, and it was definitely, as you mentioned, uh, Eric, definitely a conversation that needs to to be had and to continue to be had uh, if 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 we are going to build Singapore up as a as a professional sporting nation uh, with homegrown talent. Uh, so I, I think we've got some great we've got some great stock here. We just have to figure out how it can well, work. We've got La Liga coaches like Hame. There you go, doing the business <laughs> with our kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I, I can tell you. I, I can add on to, to this. Uh, if you think about uh, statistically in in Europe, one of the footballers that we lose in those ages. It's amazing. I can tell you that uh, a, a huge amount of players that are lost because of they cannot face the, 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 the transition from academy football to professional football. Those ages, so the same ages. If we are able to, to, mm. to provide them with the strategies during this national service, it, it either is uh, going to the national service and, and providing with the, that mindset to, 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 to be mature to psychologically, to, to face the, that problem, that issues, they will be there. So, so I'm sure that uh, there is a hmm. lot uh, that, that we can do and, and uh, what we will do, you know. That's interesting. Maybe we can use the European model uh, for, for uh, Singapore. Yeah, absolutely. Good and stuff. They compete with the Europeans at the World Cup. <laughs> that's we what go. we're looking for. That's <laughs> a long-term ambition. Majula Singapore. That's uh, what we want. Uh, that's where we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The School of Football Academy, the SFA now underway a part of the unleash the roar thanks so much to eric chua sui long the chairman of unleash the roar and also jaime sarah head coach at the school football academy great to have you both on and we look forward to having you on again in the future when uh, when you get some updates for us on, on how it's going yeah, thanks so much thank you so much thank you have a great weekend